Alas, the age-old question, should I use Unity or Unreal to develop my game, just got a little bit more interesting. So let's talk about it. As you may know, Epic Games recently released version 5 of the Unreal Engine, and with it came some very impressive features to an already powerful engine. Of course, the ones that people are talking about the most are the ones that showcase really nicely, such as Nanite, which is their new, essentially automated LOD system, as well as Lumen, which is their dynamic global illumination and reflection system. Of course, these are you know really pretty features, but there are many more features that were actually added to the Unreal Engine as of version 5. In fact, myself, Jason Wyman, and Yorai Omer were recently on Jason's game dev show where we discussed some of these lesser known features that are new for Unreal Engine 5 and a lot of really cool ones. But today I do want to focus on one of them specifically, which is Unreal's Mass Entity System, which is essentially Unreal's take at an ECS framework. Of course, on this channel, I focus a lot on Unity's ECS framework. So I kind of just want to check out where Unreal is at as far as their entity component system goes, see how their implementation compares with Unity's, see what we can maybe learn from it and improve our own Unity ECS projects, and ultimately answer the question, Unity or Unreal? Anyways, before we get into it, and speaking of Jason Wyman, who I just mentioned a few moments ago, Jason is actually putting on a Game Dev Guild conference, which is an entirely online game development conference. A lot of it's focused around Unity, and it's going to be featuring a bunch of talks from a bunch of people, um, you know, similar to myself or experts in the industry, just talking about all sorts of cool topics related to game development and Unity programming and improving your projects. It's going to be a three-day event happening later in the month of May. I'm actually going to be giving a talk during this conference where I'm going to be discussing how you can improve your existing Unity project with the power of Unity's Entity Component System. So that's going to be a talk on there and there's going to be a Q&A section afterwards. But anyways, there's going to be lots of these talks happening. And there's also a bunch of really neat bonuses included with your pass to the conference. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out using the links in the description below if you are interested in attending. But anyways, enough about that. Let's talk about Unreal Engine and their new mass entity system. So most of this information actually comes from a 30 minute talk put on by Mario Palermo during the State of Unreal 2022 showcase. I'll have a link to that video down in the description of this video, which is just posted over on Unreal's YouTube channel. Now, side note, it's almost uncanny how similar the Unreal and Unity YouTube channels are. Like if you look at them side by side and you just took out the like Unreal and Unity logos, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two of them, to be honest. It's like some parallel game dev universe almost where, you know, everything's just slightly different, but kind of the same, which is kind of goes for basically Unity's ECS versus Unreal's mass entity system. You know, there are a lot of similarities in many ways, but there are definitely some weird differences that we'll be going into. So the video starts out by just doing kind of like a high level overview about data oriented design and what an entity component system is. Of course, many of this stuff is going to be like exactly the same as Unity's entity component system because the high level concepts are basically exactly the same. However, if you're familiar with Unity's entity component system, just even at this point already, you're gonna start seeing that they use a lot of the same terminology for certain things, but then for other things, they use you know completely different terminology for seemingly no reason. So like for example, they have things like entity queries, archetypes, and chunks. You know, basically those concepts are the same thing in Unity ECS and Unreal's mass entity system. And then there are some things that are named completely differently for seemingly no reason. So for example, instead of components, they're actually called fragments, you know, the little bits of data that actually store the, you know, data values associated with particular entities. These are called fragments, not components. Instead of systems, these are called processors. So rather than you know, a system that iterates across a bunch of components, we have processors that iterate across fragments. So I'm not really sure why they didn't, why they changed it up from ECS. You know, ECS stands for Entity Component System, which is you know, the, the three separation of different things. We have entities, components, and systems, but they changed the naming terminology to be entities, fragments, and processors. So it's not the entity component system, I guess it's the entity fragment processor. Anyways, after that, they actually went into the actual implementation and kind of, you know, opened up the engine and showed you how to set all these things up. So the first thing to note is that, you know, we basically do have to add in these packages similar to, you know, how we would with the Unity game engine. 
or they have their own kind of package manager system and they can add all these different, you know, mass entity packages in there. Also, one thing to note about Unreal's mass entity implementation is that it is also still in the experimental preview phases, meaning that it is not recommended to be used in production projects as of right now. So very similar to Unity in that regard. Anyways, once you have those preview packages loaded up in your project, you can start adding things in. Now, one cool thing that I will say about Unreal's Mass Entity is that there are a lot of neat things already built into the engine. The one example of this is there's actually just like an entity spawner. You can just like, you know, plop it in your project, you know, say how many entities you want to spawn, kind of the range of where you want to spawn these and how you want to order them. So that's something that's just kind of like already built in. You don't have to like build your own entity spawner. So I thought that was kind of nice. Also, they have a bunch of systems that are basically added into the engine by default. Now, a lot of these are kind of related to path finding or local avoidance systems, things of that nature. Also, one of the built-in systems is a pretty cool LOD system, which we'll be talking about a little bit later in this video. But it's really cool that they have this like really massive list of them and you can just kind of, you know, go through and say, oh, I want to go ahead and enable this system here. And then that system will now apply to the entities that fit under those specific entity queries. So now when we get to the point of actually like creating entities and, you know, adding, I guess, fragments to these entities. So basically the way they do that is through this concept known as traits. Now traits seems very similar to like an authoring component where it's something that you can kind of attach to, you know, whatever the uh, unreal version of a game object is. You basically attach this trait on there and then based off of that trait, then it can apply, you know, some number of fragments to that particular entity. And so this seems very similar to how authoring components work. So, you know, with custom authoring components, we can of course, you know, put in a bunch of values for, you know, a specific thing. And then we attach that to a game object. And then, you know, at runtime and the conversion process, when it converts a game object over into an entity, then it can kind of run through some steps most oftentimes the authoring components are just going to, you know, put one data component onto an entity. But of course, if we do, you know, some custom ones, we can have that, you know, populate multiple data components onto an entity. So these, these traits seem to work very similar to uh, authoring components in that sense. Then when we look at systems, which I guess they're known as processors on the Unreal side, so are very similar to how systems work within Unity's entity component system. So, you know, we kind of have the ability to say that we want to say auto initialize this system, meaning that, you know, the, the game engine basically takes care of starting this system up and having it run over time. And then we can also set some certain parameters on it where if we want it to run before or after a certain system. Then we can also create entity queries where we can query for entities with a specific set of fragments. And then we can run the processor on that collection of entities. So then the presenter of the talk basically showed how to create this little demo where it spawned a hundred cones and then just kind of, you know, move them randomly within a specific range. And then after he showcased that, he, you know, ramped up the entity count to 10,000 because I guess 10,000 is that, you know, like magic entity component system number that all the demos show. Um, but then, yeah, he showed that and it was kind of interesting because they basically admitted that the frame rate was rather poor with about 10,000 entities in there. But he said there were still a number of optimizations that could be made. Um, for example, everything in that was actually running on the main thread. They didn't really go into multi-threading all that much in this talk. Um, they said it's, you know, something doable, but it just kind of requires a number of extra steps. It doesn't seem like it's as easy to implement as multi-threading in Unity ECS is right now. Anyways, as they went a little bit more in depth into the coding, you know, a lot of it, just kind of my general feel on it, seemed like a very similar to some of the earlier versions of Unity's entity component system. You know, there's a lot of things that you have to do that are, you know, very verbose. It seems like there's a decent amount of boilerplate code. You know, you kind of have to do things a lot more manually. Now, don't get me wrong, like that hasn't been completely resolved in the current version of Unity ECS but there definitely are a lot of things that are now built into the e Unity's ECS, like you know, entities.foreach functions, iJob entity, even just the system base class and having some little helper functions on there that really just kind of you know, put wrappers around things just to make the code a lot easier to work with and kind of cleaner to use. You know, it didn't seem like a lot of that stuff is quite present in the Unreal Mass entity yet. Then next they showcased a little demo project that they had created where there's these little characters that run around and they mine for resources and build these structures. Definitely think it was a nice cool little way to show off an entity component system. 
They didn't really talk too in depth about how it was set up. As I said, there was a lot more kind of complexity in that demo and they wanted this to be more of like an introduction to the mass entity, which you know is totally fair. Um, but I do think it was a nice enough looking demo. And I was like, oh cool, looks like they've got animation in here, which is something that Unity doesn't have in their entity component system. Well, it turns out Unreal doesn't actually have that either. They did mention that um, this was some, you know, preview preview package that isn't publicly available right now that they were using, um, but it didn't seem kind of like a cool implementation for an animation package. Basically the way that it works is animations are baked into textures on a per bone basis, and then they're played in the mesh without a need for a skeletal mesh. I guess it turns out to, you know, animation is just something tough to do in an entity component system. Doesn't matter if you're uh, using Unity or Unreal apparently. Anyways, this is also where they showcase that cool LOD system that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So basically the way this works is, you know, if the camera is further away from certain entities, then certain optimizations are going to be made. So for example, meshes turn actually into static meshes because you know maybe you don't need some hardcore animation processing if the camera is kind of far away when the player wouldn't even really notice what's going on. Also, some systems are ignored. So for example, they mentioned that you know the avoidance system in this case was ignored. So if you pull the camera back and you look really closely, you can actually see some of the entities are kind of you know overlapping each other as they're kind of walking around. And that's basically because the avoidance system is turned off at specific distances. Because in theory, I mean, it kind of makes sense. You don't really need like these avoidance systems to be taking place when the camera is, you know, far so far away that you can't even see them. Also, they did mention that certain systems can be programmed to run at a lower tick rate when your camera is further away just because you know some certain things again just don't need to be that accurate when the camera is further away. So I definitely think these are all some cool ideas and there are definitely some things that we can you know build out manually in Unity if we wanted to, but it's nice that Unreal just kind of has these things right out of the box in their mass entity system. So anyways, that was basically the extent of this presentation. I do think it was a nice presentation. If you are interested in these entity component systems, I would highly recommend that you go check it out. Um, so now let me kind of go into some of my kind of overall thoughts on what I think of Unreal's mass entity system compared to Unity's one. So this is clearly very experimental and it's definitely not as far along as Unity's entity component system. Again, like I mentioned, this kind of seems like where it's at is kind of some of the earlier days of Unity's entity component system. Also, multi-threading does seem to be a little bit more difficult on the Unreal side. They didn't even showcase how to actually do multi-threading, so I don't know, you know what extra steps are involved. Um, but that's definitely something that you know seems to be a little bit more challenging than Unity's entity component system. But like I mentioned, I do like the built-in things that Unreal's mass entity has out of the box. You know, for example, there's kind of the built-in entity spawners, so it's you know we don't have to create our own. We can just kind of drop one in and kind of set some parameters on it. Of course, you know if you're making your own project, you're probably going to want to make your own spawner. But it's nice to just have you know something out of the box that we can use to test with. Also, having all those you know kind of systems by default that we can just kind of enable whenever to you know allow for you know specific pathfinding, avoidance, and some of these LOD systems. I definitely think that's a cool addition to have. Again, these are all features that could be implemented in Unity's entity component system, but it's just kind of nice that these are all just right out of the box. So, anyways, to answer the age-old question, Unity or Unreal? Well, really that, you know, entirely depends on you and what your goals are. You know, if you're just kind of like looking to mess around with an entity component system, you kind of want to get into this data oriented design mindset. I definitely recommend going with Unity's entity component system just because it's a lot further along in development. It's been out in the wild for a lot longer. And just because of that, you can find more resources online in like, you know, forum and blog posts. Of course, we have my YouTube channel and our Discord community. Maybe not everything that you come across is gonna be entirely up to date, but there's just gonna be more information that's gonna kind of help you figure out how this, how to actually use this a lot better. Also, like I mentioned, there's kind of a lot more kind of quality of life features in Unity's ECS. They're just ways to kind of, you know, simplify how you actually write the code and you don't have to write a bunch of extra boilerplate code. And you still have to do a little bit. There's definitely a lot of quirks to it, um, but it definitely seems easier maybe to get the hang of rather than Unreal's version of it. But on the other side, you know, is your main goal to make, you know, ambitious AAA games? You know, maybe 
Unreal Mass Entity System is something that you want to start experimenting with because you know you see a lot of companies nowadays they're actually you know switching away from propri proprietary game engines and moving to things like Unreal. And so if that's something that you're really interested in doing is like you know being a part of these big massive teams making these crazy massive games, you know it definitely seems like some companies will soon be wanting to really leverage Unreal's Mass Entity. And if you kind of have like a good understanding of how all that works you know, then that could be very beneficial for you in finding a job at one of those places. But anyways, that's just about going to do it for today's video. Really do hope that you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two about Unreal's mass entity. Anyways, um, if you did, I really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about mostly Unity's entity component system and they did it or technology stack. But, you know, maybe we'll throw some unreal things in here and there when it makes sense to. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. That's all I have for you today. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.